lived in a sod shack house. And of course, there was depression time, things were tough, eh? But George always loved the horses. He didn't care for school very much. When he wasn't there, they'd find him down in the barn with the horses, eh? And they rode this little prairie circuit here, you know, like Carson, Raymond McGrath, the stampede time, say. And this man saw him and thought, that guy knows how to ride a horse. So he signed a contract with George to be a jockey for him, eh? Took him out to Vancouver, did bigger racetracks and stuff. Then well there, took him on down to California, then really well there. Then they raced sometimes in Mexico in those days. And back to California and circuits there. And he wound up in Santa Anita with this man. And little by little he got to ride, uh, ride the very prominent horses. One time a lady had this race horse, but she didn't have a jockey and she didn't have the entry fee for the race either. George heard about her. He says, I'll ride your horse and I'll put up the entry fee. He said, if we win anything, it's yours. So he won the race and it was for $100,000 and give it to the lady. Yeah. Yeah. He was very generous. I think it's his background from being coming from a humble area of people. When they had that horse race and they had it on the movies in those days, I worked in the theater here at Carson at that time. They used to have what they called movie tone news, eh? before the th main film. And this, they had that on as the day George was in the race, eh? The people in the theater were standing up cheering. Yeah, come on, George, come on. <laughs> yeah. And he always wanted to come back to Carson, you know, for a visit. And he was gonna come here. They had arranged that he had to lead the parade and be at the stampede and everything. And he got killed four months before he was going to come here. Yeah. In a lot of ways, he was a cowboy at heart. When he wasn't on the racetrack, he'd be on a horse and he's cowboy outfit. Yeah. Yeah, he was just a horseman, that's all. I think what really brought it back is when they made that movie with Seabiscuit, eh? Up until then, it kind of passed by. But when they had Seabiscuit in the movie and George, it brought everything back. And like uh, Jack Lowe, you probably met him here. And he's no relation at all. But he said one day George Wolf should be honored properly. And so he came and saw me in left vision. I said, Oh, Jack, forget it. I said, So far back, nobody will pay any attention to you. It's going to be done. My golly, it's done, eh? He spent countless hours, traveled thousands of miles. Anytime you'd hear a tip of anything about George, you know, him and his wife would take off and go. Yeah. He started five years ago to do this. It's been said that to write down all the things George accomplished in that short time, it would take a hardback book that would fill it, there would still be things left over. Yeah. And he's always humble, always say, where are you from? Cardston, yeah. And that's why they call him the Iceman. He never was one to, uh, you know, show off or things like that. He's always a humble, quiet guy. Yeah, he was, yeah. It's kind of sad that he got killed the way he did, but I'm sure George wouldn't want it any other way. You know, died with his boots on. Yeah.